the Gree Gree tree. It never ends the same. When dealing with the Gree Gree, whether you know what it is or not, expect the unexpected. Expect the incredible, the incredulous, the amazing, the awe-inspiring, the frightening, the fantastic, the meaningful, the mysterious, the highly spiritual, and even the hilarious. Once again, when dealing with the Gree Gree, expect the unexpected because you never know how it will end because how it will end all depends. All right, Brother Jawad. Folks, this is Brother Jawad and I'm Bob Mack. We're griots. And I suppose I should explain to you exactly what that means. You see, in this country, most people think of griots as storytellers, and that is part of what we do. But in Africa, where the first griots appeared, well, today they think of griots more as uh, musicians, because that's part of what we do. But griots were also so much more. The profession goes back thousands and thousands of years. I have one story which says that it's 3,000 generations old. Now, if we figure that that generation was 20 years, that would make that a 6,000 year old story. Reels have been around longer than that. Uh, before computers, internet, television, radio, before books, libraries, before there were even written words, there were griots. And the griots' job, like, they were teachers. Just like a modern teacher, the griot taught people what they needed to know to survive. The griot was an oral historian. It was their job to learn all the stories of their people so that they could tell them, because they couldn't get online and find out. They couldn't go to the library. So the only way you're going to understand that there was king so-and-so and king so-and-so and then queen so-and-so and then king. The only way you know that is to listen to the songs and stories of the griot. Uh, griot's the most famous griot in the world is a man that you've all heard of. You just did not know that he was a griot or an African. His name was Aesop or Aesop. Most of you have heard of him, right? Aesop's fables, the lion and the mouse, the tortoise and the hare, King Midas and his gold. Those are all the stories of that long ago griot called Aesop. You see, as a boy living in North Africa, in a village, Aesop was learning to be a griot. Because remember, I told you, griot got to have a whole lot of stories and songs and poems, and he was just learning them when he was captured by Phrygian slavers, taken across the Mediterranean in the same way that our ancestors were taken across the Atlantic sold into slavery. But while Aesop was in Greece, he not only learned to speak Greek, but to write it. His job was to teach his owner's daughter. And when he wasn't tutoring this daughter, well, he worked for himself as a teacher, using the stories, the songs, the poems that he had learned to teach the Greeks. Well now, they didn't have much interest in the stories about uh, how the Nupe people had moved from here to there and who was the king. They didn't, they didn't care about African history. So they ignored that. But they loved the fables, the stories which taught people how to get along, which had lessons. So these were the stories that they loved. These were the stories that Aesop wrote down in Greek. The same stories that you can find 
in a library or online today. Yeah. Now there's another word that you might not be familiar with that Brother Jawad mentioned, and that's Grigri. Any of y'all think you know what a Grigri is? I got an idea, but I don't honestly know. It seems that nobody can say for sure what the Grigri is, except maybe the people who work with them. But to some people, that Grigri is um, a magical charm, maybe a, a necklace or a bracelet that someone would wear, which would protect them from evil, keep away harm, cause someone to fall in love with them, could do anything in the world. And to others, well, it's a some kind of a, a poultice or a pouch with herbs and things in it that they wear around their neck or keep with them all the time. And, you know, a scientist, an herbalist would say, well, no, 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 that's not magic at all. That's just this herb and that herb and this one causes this and that one causes that. And that's why the fever went away and that person feels better. That might be the case. Wouldn't explain why the herbs work when they put them under the bed or uh, in somebody's pocket, but the grill is a very difficult thing to figure out. Now, today, we've got a special story for you, a special kind of story. It's called a dilemma tale. Now, I will still tell the story as the story tells. Brother Jawad will play the music and sing songs. But you get to supply the ending. You see, a dilemma tale was a, but it was more than entertainment. Dilemma tales were used to solve problems, to resolve arguments. If two people were in dispute as to whose cow this was that was wandering in the bush, well, rather than fighting over it or having a judge say this way or that, they gathered the people together and the grill would tell a story which very much resembled what had happened. And the people would supply an ending which resolved the dispute. It wasn't just for minor things. This could be a discussion about whether or not we're going to go to war. Should we move the village from here to there? And the griot crafts a tale, which takes you to the point where you are, and then asks the people to supply the endings. And whatever ending the people supply that works best, well, that's the decision. Now, our story of the Grigri tree, I've told it many times, it never ends the same. And I have no idea what endings you're going to provide today. So let's get to it. It's the story of two Nupe boys. Now, the Nupe people lived in what they called back then, darkest Africa. They lived in what is now Eastern Nigeria. It is near the heart of Africa. And in this story, we have three brothers who live far away from villages with their aunt in a little hut in the jungle. And one day the grandmother calls these three boys and says, all right, you're going to do something you've never done before. You are going to take this basket of food and herbs to your aunt. Well, the boys had been to their aunt's house before, and it was a day's journey, but nothing special. This is the first time that you will make this journey on your own. And then they all started to get a little bit apprehensive, except the youngest one who was excited, because he wanted to go. And she said, now, here's a bag of food, a basket of food for you. Eat this. Do not eat your aunt's food. Do not leave the path. 
There will be fruits and things growing in the jungle, but stay on the path. For if you leave that path to get something to eat, there's something hiding in the jungle waiting to eat you. Boys suddenly understood this was serious. This was almost grown man stuff. And so they were excited to get to do it. And they start off on their way. And I must tell you about these three brothers. We only know the name of the youngest. I don't know why, but the story says that there's an older brother who's almost a man. So that would make him probably 14, 15, and most 16. And there's a middle brother that we don't know much about, but the younger brother Malik. Oh, Malik was fiery, exciting, an active 10 year old. So as soon as they start out, Malik is going this way and that. He's running and doing stuff and trying to go this way. And his older brother grabs him. Come back here, she said, stay on the path. And he goes that way. Come back here, she said, stay on the path. But the grandmother warned them about one thing before they set out. And that was the Grigri tree. She said, as long as you stay on the path, you're safe. Don't leave the path. And whatever you do, stay away from the Grigri tree. Don't eat its fruit. Don't even touch the leaves. The Grigri tree is dangerous. It could even kill. And so the boys are walking. They kind of got their eyes out. And the older brother had to ask, well, how, how are we going to know this tree? Don't worry, you'll know it. It is the biggest tree you have ever seen. It is taller than the tallest tree. It is as big around as the boobob, which is the biggest tree in the forest. You will know it. And you better stay away from it. So... They're going off, and the middle brother is carrying the bag of food, the basket of food, and the older brother has the basket of herbs for the aunt. But the little brother is steady, reaching in that bag of food, eating, eating, and trying to get off the path. Ooh, what was that? Come back here, Malik. They just keep stopping him. But by the time they're less than halfway on the journey, all the food was gone. And that made Malik even more excited. I see some bananas. Come back here. Oh, but there's berry. No. And that's the way this went on. Halfway through the forest. Until they come to this big clearing. Where there was one gigantic tree. And they all stopped and looked at that. Whoa. But then... The younger brother, Malik, goes, mm, that smells good. It smells like food. And he starts around the tree to the other side. And there, a little fire on the ground, a cook fire with two pots. One was covered, and that's where that beautiful smell was coming from. The other had nothing but water and leaves, probably herbs, but... Malik wasn't interested in that. The only thing he cared about was that food that smelled so good. So he opens the pot and his older brother says, put that down, leave it alone. Grandma said, don't eat anything else, you ate all the food, so we're gonna walk hungry. Let's go. And he picks up his bag, but as he's picking up that basket, Malik picks up the pot top, takes a scoop with a spoon that was there, and he's just about to eat it when he heard something, and coming down from the sky, this long, tall guy lands. What do you think? And then and, and they all look at him and it's kind of weird. I mean, he's wearing nothing but some leaves around his waist and a crown made of the same leaves. And this tall, thin dude says, did I offer you 
any of my stew? He says, come to eat my fruit and drink my tea and take advantage of my hospitality. And he looked mean and angry. And all of a sudden, all three boys are afraid. Malik puts the top down and he's still holding the spoon. And his older brother says, oh, sir, I I'm so sorry, please. Forgive my brother. He didn't know any better. He's just, he's just a youngster. He, he doesn't understand. He, we, he's just hungry. And please, please, don't be mad. And then the Grigri man laughed. <laughs> well, you can come and eat my fruit and drink my tea. And of course, you may enjoy my hospitality. A complete change just because he was polite. And so the older brother relaxes and says, ah. and the middle brother is standing beside him, amazed at what's going on. But Malik, who's on the ground right by that pot, said, okay, and took a taste of that food. When he did, he just sits there a minute like this, shaking a little bit. And the Grigri -gri man says, whoa! And when he did, all the trees leaned just like him. They kind of, the leaves echoed the sound that he made. And he came back and looked at him, and when he did, it's like the trees were all bowing in to look to. And he says, and Malik says, and then jumped way up into the top of that tree. Now the lowest limb on this tree was taller than any other tree in the forest, but Malik jumped all the way up there. Boop! Landed on that tree branch, looked down, waved, and jumped all the way to another tree. Well, the boys are amazed, and the Green Green Man is smiling and laughing. <laughs> Older brother says, Malik, come back here. If he hears it, he doesn't let him know it. He just keeps going, hopping from tree to tree. And he looks at the Green Green Man, hey, what just happened? What happened to my brother? Well, the middle brother. Sees Malik up in the trees going around and around and works his way over to where that pot is. He looks at the tall brother who is about to get into a real big argument with the green green man. And he says, I guess I might as well try it too. Lifts that top, takes a taste. The older brother says, you weren't supposed to. The older brother stands, the middle brother stands up, and he's kind of wobbly. Grigory man said, uh oh, and flop. Middle brother falls flat on his face. He's out cold. The older brother says, what did you do? He runs over to his brother, turns him over, tries to wake him up, and it's not working. He is not waking up. He says, what did you do to my brother? Grigri man grabs that pot and a cup, pours some tea into that cup and say, all he need is some Grigri tea. Well, the older brother didn't like that idea. He's already got one brother going crazy and this one knocked out and now you want to give him some more? Oh no, he's mad, he jumps up. No, you cannot give that to my brother. Look what you did, look what you did. Grigory man said, oh, it ain't nothing. Grigory is some strong stuff. And first time he had it, he just need the tea. Wake him up and make him see things. And he offers the tea. And the older brother says, oh, no, no, no. You are not giving that to my brother. This is where I start the story. And you start. You see, I told you a dilemma tale. The audience supplies the ending. So what happens next?
Tell me something new, fun, exciting. What happens? The what if the brother gets in a fight with the Gree Gree man? That's one I've never heard before, and I've told this story often. So let's see what happens. The older brother gets up and he says, no! Back! Slaps that cup of tea out of the Gree Gree man's hand. Gree Gree man says, what you doing? And the older brother says, you leave my brother alone. Gree Gree man says, oh man, I'm not going to hurt him. Look at him, he out. He needs some tea to wake up. And he reaches for another cup. Fills that cup. And when he comes forward with that cup, the big brother just can't take it anymore. He jumps on the green green man. Uh, 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 and he's trying to knock that cup out of his hand. And the green green man is looking at him saying, what went wrong with you? He's hanging on the green green man's arm. And remember, the green green man's kind of tall. So he's actually off the ground just trying to get rid of that cup. And he can't get rid of it. He cannot move this Gree Gree man at all. And the Gree Gree man says, Oh, my, you wasting your time. Now, I can help your brother, but you better get that other one. He get that far, it's gorillas. Oh, the brother says, Oh, no! And he runs off into the forest, chasing his brother, who's up in the trees. He chases and yells and yells and chases. And finally, Malik disappears into the trees somewhere and he has no idea where. He goes back to the spot beside the tree and there's nobody there. The Gree Gree Man is gone. His brother is gone. No idea where little brother is. He picks up the bag, basket of herbs and goes walking through the walking through the jungle wondering what he's going to tell his aunt. You never know what's going to happen with your green green. Hmm. Sorry if that one's kind of down, but the story doesn't always come out good. And I never know what the story is. I never know. So, since some of you didn't like that ending, why don't you give me another ending? What if the older brother went running back, well, went running to his auntie's house to get to ask her for help? Okay. Let's see what happens. Now, we have the middle brother on the ground, unconscious. We have the older brother hopping around from tree to tree. Nobody can keep up with him. And we got the hunter with a cup of gree gree tea saying, Drink some. I give him this, he'll be all right. The older brother stands up. He says, no, don't you touch him. Don't come near him. I'll be back for Malik. And he picks up his brother, puts him on his shoulder, takes about maybe 10 steps before he realizes this is not going to work. So he turns around, goes back to the base of the Gregory tree, lays his brother down. Green Green Man is still standing there, smiling and laughing. And he says, Sir, I need you to promise me that you will watch over my brothers. Protect them. I'm going for help. And the Green Green Man says, Well, I can help him, but if that's what you want, I won't do nothing. And won't nothing happen to him. Now that one in the trees, well, I can't follow him and take care of this one. What you want me to do? Hold the brother. 
brother says, please, please, just take care of this brother. And he takes off running through the forest. When he gets to the grandmother's house, sorry, to the aunt's house, he gets there and the aunt says, well, you're so sweet, but where are your brothers? And he tells her what happened. She shakes her head. Boy, you go back. You go find your brothers. And you tell that green, green man, no bother you ever again. Because you are my children. And then she surprises him. Because, you know, she's always loved him, let him in and all of that. She takes that basket, goes into the house, boom, slams that thatch door, and that's it. And the older brother is standing here, wondering, waiting. He goes back to the green tree, tree. still nobody there. His brother, the green green man, never gone. He goes home, wondering. How in the world he's going to tell his grandmother that he lost two brothers? Mm. Wow. That doesn't happen often. Two kind of down endings in a row, but I'm really not making these things up. They just come out of the air. Inspired by a Greek. Let's do one more before we go. Come on. Somebody give me something I have not heard before. What if the auntie shows up? Yeah, what if the auntie shows up? Okay. Yeah. Older brother is standing here. Looking at his brother. Looking at the green green man with the tea. Looking for his brother who's disappeared in the trees. And he's lost. He doesn't know what to do. He starts to cry. Now he's almost a man and you know. Once you start growing up, you don't want anybody to see you cry. But he doesn't know what else to do. He just stands there and cries and cries. And the green green man watches this. He sits down the cup of tea. <laughs> Makes this loud, loud sound. Louder than any of the animals in the jungle. And when he does, all of the leaves on the trees vibrate. Everything is shaking. The green green man is now shaking. Brothers on here don't know what to do. The brother who is passed out is now shaking. The whole world seems to be vibrating. And suddenly, this little lady comes through the forest. The little lady who is the aunt that they were coming to save. And as soon as she gets into the clearing, your children just don't listen. And the green green man smiles and takes a step back. And the big brother now is on the ground with his brother. Auntie, you're here. She says, of course I'm here. I was called. I'm too sick to fix my own food. And this man has to call me. He never calls me. It doesn't happen unless there is an emergency. And I see there is an emergency. And she goes over and she checks out this little brother and says, oh. He ate the stew, didn't he? The older brother says, yes, I tried to stop him, but, but, but nothing. 
My sister told you. Don't mess with the tree. This man, he's a guardian of this tree. Now he not gonna do you no harm, but he can't protect you either. You must learn to listen. And then she waves at the gray gray man, pulls out what he had in the cup, pulls a fresh cup of gray gray tea and hands it to to grandma, to the aunt rather. And the aunt raises the boy's head up, gives him a little sip of tea. He coughs, starts to wake up. She say, here child, drink this. And he drinks. And then he stands up. Wow. Wow. Whoa! And when he says that, out of the trees comes a younger brother. And he runs over and hugs his arm. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. She grabs him by his hair, pulls him back. Yeah, you ain't been doing what you was told either. Or else you wouldn't have been in that tree. Come on, y'all. We going home right now. Right now. Let's go. And they go walking. And all the while they're walking, well, Angie is complaining. Make me, I'm get up off my sick bed to come and take care of you boys, cause you can't listen. You gonna learn to listen one day or something gonna eat you. And she just keeps walking. And there's nothing for the boys to do but follow. You just never know what the green green gonna do.